Okay, this is Jacob Schmidt with DeerHuntingSchool.com sitting here doing a video analysis of a property um, for someone, uh, for Corey. I appreciate you letting me take a look at this. Um, I hope this this will I can point you in in a direction, uh, at least give you some something to think about, a few things to think about, and uh, kind of uh, you know get you you know some things that I see here on this property. So. Um, that's what these video analysis is about, basically from aerial photo, what I, you know, things I can see, different types of things I can see. Um, this is something that a lot of people don't do enough of is looking at aerial photos because there are people that, um, you know, I've had people leave comments on, on some of the aerial photos, um, aerial photo videos that you can't see the terrain and things like that from aerial photos. and. And this is true. You can't see everything from aerial photos that you can see from from the ground, but there are things that you could see on aerial photo that you can't see from the ground. And these guys miss that because uh, you know they both have their their um, place. I mean, it would be silly to think that you know you know that with the technology that we have nowadays that you can't um, you know find deer because I have found some spots that are mature buck hunting spots and never done any scouting other than um, on aerial photo. You, you can pick them out, um, you know, by understanding, looking at the area and all kinds of things. And, you know, it's some other homework you got to do into it, figure out what kind of hunting pressure and stuff there is on the property. So, um, Corey, it sound like in your, in your first email um, that you've done a little homework that, that there's that you you've kind of looked in the what type of hunting pressure is going on here, um, stuff like that. You said you haven't heard uh, you know any shots from the area, so there's a chance you know that there's there's no one hunting it. Uh, one of two things is going on with that. Either one there's there's not uh, hardly any deer there, um, or two there's no one hunting it. Most likely, um, there it, it could be a little of both and it could be you know and a lot of times that scares people says well there you know there's not a whole lot of deer there there's that you know there could be an area where there's doesn't hold a a whole lot of deer but the thing is it gets me about them spots or a lot of times them are the best spots to hunt because that's where the big bucks are a lot of times and the reason for that is, is because nobody hunts it so um now I'm not saying that there's not a whole lot of deer here. There could be a, a bunch of deer. If there's no one hunting it, there probably is quite a few deer. Um, it looks like it's really close to neighborhoods. That's another reason a lot of guys overlook areas like this here because they think, well, there's not going to be any big bucks there because you know it's so close to neighborhoods. I mean, we have a neighborhood here. There's there's a neighborhood here. There's a huge neighborhood right here. Um, so, you know. There's, you know, and there's neighborhoods back in here, okay? So, you know, this could seriously be overlooked. If it is, there's probably quite a few deer. Um, if it's not overlooked and people know about it, um, you know, and there's not very many people hunting it because there's not a, a, a huge number of deer there, um, there's probably going to be a chance of some good deer there. Maybe not a ton of them, but probably a good chance of, of really nice bucks. Okay, so either way, <clears throat> the area has potential okay you know because you know basically um, if you're not hearing any shots there or anything there's probably uh, not anybody hunting it and no matter what the reason is there's nobody hunting it areas that aren't hunted hold deer and a lot of times if there's not a lot of deer hold big deer so let's go ahead and take a look at it um, first thing I want to do here really cool feature uh, on Google Earth I want to drop down on this road um, right here and show you something and obviously you realize this but um, because you're from the area and again and, and I also had someone comment that you couldn't see side view angle views off of Google Earth but this is a side angle view and this is Google Earth and Anyways, I'm looking at this bridge, and I'm seeing this. There's a lot of rock there. Looks like a pretty uh, on both sides. Looks like it'd be very difficult for deer to cross. Um, so that interests me. And uh, 
also um, you know we know the speed limit is 45 here so anyways I don't want to zoom in too close because that, you can actually read the phone numbers off this sign um, here so but I want you to see that because I want you to understand what I'm seeing I'm seeing a, a pretty large area I mean I'm gonna back up um, here I'm looking at a pretty good area it's difficult for deer to cross. Um, I mean, we're talking, that's probably a uh, hundred. That there is probably, a, that's that's over a hundred yards, a hundred, two hundred yards, I would say. I, I mean, obviously we're looking at picture here, but um, that's a pretty good area that's going to be a little tougher for deer to cross. Um, so what um, the point is that I'm getting at here. I'm going to exit Street View here. Um, the point at that I'm getting, and we can see it here, you know, the main thing I'm getting at is that this is difficult to cross, and if that is the case, these deer are going to funnel around that kind of deal. Now, I'm going to turn this map. We're going to look at this from where north is actually to the left. North is over here. Okay, so... Um, this looks like a pretty hard area to cross, at least for a good span. And the property that line is right here, somewhere um, in this area here. So I'm looking. I really, when I look at that, if I'm going to go in and I was going to hunt this property um, because of that. Uh, now I'm not saying deer can't cross through here. Well, let's just let me erase that real quick. Um, I'm not saying deer can't cross through here, but right here to here right down and through here uh, looks pretty difficult to cross so you know if if I'm a deer that's just taking the path of least resistance okay and I you know I'm cruising up through here um, and it's difficult to cross here that's gonna basically funnel me this direction which you can't hunt over here so it doesn't matter but but understanding the point does because you may run across stuff like this in the future. So, you know, you know, deer can cross here if they're forced to. But it, we're talking, a, you know, a calm deer. Um, so these deer, you know, very likely just to kind of follow that eh, this in this direction here. Somewhere down in here. Okay. Somewhere in here where it gets easy to cross. And you're going to have to, that's where you're going to have to use some of your own judgment. And you're going to have to actually look at it. Because it could be. It could be here, but somewhere I believe that this is going to create a funnel uh, where deer are actually kind of, you know, walking around that that difficult area to cross. So I'm what I'm thinking is that there should be a heavier crossing than normal somewhere in this this area, okay? Whether it be here or here or, or wherever it is, um, that bridge. It's not really a bridge. It's just a diff difficult. Well, I think it may be a little bit of a bridge there, but um, you know, it's causing an area here where you know the deer aren't going to just cross real easy. So that pushes deer, like I said, somewhere out in here. So I'm I'm going to look somewhere. You know, I'm going to maybe drive down the road. Um, look and see where them deer are crossing because I suspect a heavier crossing than normal what I mean by that is this here okay just in case you're kind of confused about what I'm talking about I'm um, deer are gonna cross this road all over the place you know there may be a deer cross there every now and then a deer cross here every now and then deer cross here every now and then um, basically you know there's they're just gonna cross randomly across the road but because of this area here there's going to be a deer that are coming from over here, and the deer are coming from over here, or vice versa. They're coming from here, going to here, um, or you know, vice versa. That are going to want to cross. You know, they're they're in this area maybe, or um, this area, or you know, or they're here and they're wanting to go here. Okay, um, that are going to be kind of funneled through somewhere down through there. There's going to be a a crossing that's heavier than normal okay that's what I mean by that I mean you're gonna have normal crossings here 
in here and you know maybe not exact locations but um, you know scattered out through there where their deer may cross every once every you know week or something uh, but I, th I really suspect there to be a heavier crossing than normal where deer may cross every day, um, every other day, you know, a lot more often, basically. Um, that is an area, you know, wherever you find that is an area, you know, up in there not too far. A uh, good area to put a uh, trail camera or two, um, you, know, to, you know, to see what's crossing there, you know, because... You know, especially during the rut, if that's going on, we're talking bucks that are cruising, covering some ground. Um, he's going to come to this this here. He's going to know it's there, and he's going to reroute his way to that easier crossing. Okay, vice versa. Um, there is a draw here. He may be working the edge of this. Uh, this this draw kind of scent checking and, and looking at things. Um, and somewhere there's going to be, now it may not be this exact spot, but it's, it's going to be something like that. This is just the idea. Um, that's a good spot for a, a trail camera somewhere there, um, or even two, or even three trail cameras. Um, and that's going to be a good stand location. Okay. Now the trail camera is obviously going to help you figure out, you know, which direction the deer are headed, what time frames, um, and any of that information is going to lead to, hey, these deer are bedded here, these deer are bedded here, here, here. This buck is bedded here. This buck's coming through here at midnight. And I'll tell him where the heck he's bedded. He's bedded a long ways away from here. It's going to lead you to information like that. And then, the, you know, also, you know, it's going to lead you to information on how you can hunt the deer better with the right wind direction. Okay, so that uh, is something that really interests me. If I was going to, to hunt this property, this is the the route that I would take. Um, I've seen it on aerial photo. I'm going to go in there, I'm going to look at it, I'm going to scout up, drive down the road, see where the main heavy deer tracks are on the side of the road, see where the deer are crossing. You should be able to see something there, and then I'm going to proceed to, uh, you know, some trail cameras, uh, figuring out the best, uh, finding a good tree to hunt out of, or maybe even uh, more than a, you know, maybe even two, two or three trees, you know, for different wind directions. So, um, enough of that there. Something else that um, interests me that really stood out when I very first looked at the property um, was this, this big area, this big open area here. And there's actually um, an open area here, and it's not showing on the map for some reason. Uh, but at least in 2010, this was, was there was something there, a little pull-off. You can actually see the the little drive but it, it's kind of open there a little bit and I don't know why it's not showing on here but anyways um, this open area interests me at first I was thinking maybe maybe that's a clear cut but it's not um, we'll go back in, 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 in the back in the past pictures here um, and look at it and see exactly what it was okay so now we're in 2013 and a 2010 here. Um, here's 2008, um, and then here's 2005. So what this actually was used to be a, a farm field of some type. Okay, and it, um, an agriculture field. You can see where they they've worked it back in you know early 2000. And then, you know, back in the 90s. Uh, can't see nothing on that picture, but. Um, so, well, let's go right back to that real quick. Um, 2005 here. 2005, they've been working it. 2005, they were working it. Now, they were in 2008. Sometime between 2005. In 2008, they stopped doing anything with this, it looks like. Um, basically, they just looks like they just left it alone. Um, or at least that's what it appears like on the, the video. And one other really neat thing about Google Earth here is I can drop down here. 
and uh, I can tell you that this land over here is posted <laughs> for the um, no I'm just joking there that's make that little joke because there was a guy told me you couldn't see stuff off of Google Earth and I told him he might be on Google Earth somewhere um, who knows um, there's probably pictures of deer he didn't obviously didn't know that Google had a car that drives all over the streets or some of something they may buy it from somebody or whatever but um, Google has a car that drives over and takes constant pictures so this picture here was in 2013 um, that looks like just some just some grown-up uh, field to me um, I do want to go just real quick right here to, so you can see this edge I mean this is the kind of stuff I do on on aerial photos I dig this deep I actually pull topo maps up and everything um, but right on the edge right there it is you can see that this is kind of clear here but then this is pretty thick out in here now this is 2013 there's grown up just grown up stuff like nobody's ever even doing anything with it um, this is October of 2013 now they may mow the field or whatever after this date but this just looks like basically nobody does anything with this. So, um, and this is a farther northern, far northern state. Um, so you you're gonna have some brutal cold, some snow, some serious uh, um, different types of weather. Okay, if that's the case, and you've got this taller grass and stuff out here, which is what I suspect, you're probably gonna have some deer bedding out in this in brutal cold weather because they can get down that grass blocks and that uh, um, wind off of them and the the sunlight can really hit them good okay um, so especially if you get any kind of it looks like this is all in the flat but um, if you get any kind of slope where they can really get out of that northerly wind on this southern side here oh I got the map wrong That's not the southern side. I forgot I turned the dang map. That still wouldn't have been the southern side. That'd have been the northern side. But um, you know, area like this where that hills maybe blocking some of that scent, scent the wind. Um, this here looks like it could have a slope. Deer may bed in here to get you know that direct sunlight hitting them, plus uh, the uh, you know out of that some of that wind. Okay, now I do think deer are going to be bedded in this at, at times, other times, and if I was, I keep moving this map around so much, I know it drives some people crazy, kind of drives me crazy when I'm watching the videos and I forget about it when I'm actually doing it because I'm, I'm looking at this stuff. <clears throat> um, so, the, um, these edges... I really want to kind of check out I would walk this entire edge of this thing and I know I'm circling the field but I would walk the entire thing and 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 look at it look for scrapes look for trails where deer are coming in and out things like that and you can you know let me do this here let me switch colors here uh, let's go blue okay you're gonna have and I'm just just drawing random lines here um, you you should have trails you know where deer are coming in and out um, you know and are coming through this kind of deal stuff like this here um, you know you may have trail you know like that but the main thing is you know and then you may have you know a trail like this you know kind of deal or something and you're I can I'm, I can guarantee you deer are gonna walk the edge of it um, all the way around the dang thing. They're going to walk the edge of it. Um, so the thing is, what you want to look for is areas where these switch colors again, where where several of these trails come together right like this, where they converge, where you have you know four or five trails coming together within bow range or gun range or whatever, and them are areas that you want to set up at. And I will almost bet. 
if you find an area like that, you're going to find uh, scrapes on the edge of that field. Okay, um, and these are spots that are going to be good um, early season and stuff, depending on the hunting pressure. If there's not a lot of hunting pressure, you may these may be decent spots. And then we're also spots for a trail camera. Now I want to warn you about putting trail cameras in open areas like that. You got to be careful because they're easier for people to find. Ninety percent of people that that if they were going to scout this property, they're going to walk that edge. Um, some of them aren't, but I can guarantee I'm going to walk it, which I'm not going to steal your trail camera. Wouldn't steal anybody's trail camera, but, you know, uh, not everyone's honest. So you got to be careful with stuff like that. Um, you may, you know, back it off out in here where a lot of them converge. And that is, you know, opening first few days, that edge is going to be a hot spot if there's bucks coming in and out of here because there's going to be some... Uh, different types of, of weeds and different things out in here that the deer are going to feed on. Um, you know, and you may set up, you know, observation stand, you know, at different locations here where you can, you know, see this entire field, see where deer are coming in and out at and see kind of what's going on. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you catch that there's deer coming in and out of it, you know, I really, I really believe on the edge is going to be good early season. Now, you may... Um, as the season goes on, the deer get a little more pressured, back off, back off this field edge a little bit. Um, you know, if they're not bedding out in it, but say they're feeding in it. Now, if they're bedding out in it, you want to get close to it. Um, but the problem is coming out in the middle of the day, you gotta be careful because their deer are going to know you're there. So, um, uh, you know, main thing with this here is looking at finding these conversion points where these trails come together and you'll see you know where the deer are coming in and out and if you find an area where there's a lot of deer coming in and out like right here you know you don't have to hunt the edge of this you can back off out in here in the woods follow them trails in and out and figure out what the heck they're going on a lot of times you're going to probably find rub lines where there's you know scattered rubs here and there and then we're going to tell you you know where bucks are traveling and then if you investigate that you know both directions see where the heck they lead why they're there what's going on what type of foods available um, when that foods available things like that you're gonna figure out what time frame that that them bucks are using that um, kind of deal and now another thing um, most of this you know let's say that Let's say that this area is heavily hunted. Okay. Now the line that you drew me went pre roughly pretty much to this road here. Um, we're going to say that, you know, you come in here, you you come in here and there's five deer stands around this. Or you can tell that a lot of guys have been hunting this. And then you come out in here and you say, man, there's a lot of people hunting this. Um, you know, there's just basically nowhere to set up. This is useless. Okay. Let's just say, you know, the this field, no way in heck there's going to be a mature buck there within anywhere of this field separate dark because there's too many people hunting it. Um, and so you say, well, I'm going to back out in the woods. I'm going to, I'm going to trick them. Um, then you get out in here and, well, there's a guy hunting here. And, my goodness, there's a guy hunting there. And then I get over here and, my goodness, there's a guy hunting here. And, and good grief, there's a guy hunting here. And, you know, there's a guy already figured out, hey, there's a big crossing here. Uh, man, there's there's something going on here. Um, you know, and this place, place is basically useless. I would not count this place out right here. If I run across a bunch of hunters, I would not count this property uh, useless. I would change my strategy. Now, I don't know what the laws are in your state about hunting close to residents and roads and things like that. So you want to check them and follow them. Whatever their, their laws are, you need to follow them. But I will say this. Very few people will do this strategy, I'm fixing to tell you. Um, you know, we're going to say this land's useless because there's every day a guy hunting every uh, inch of it almost. But I can almost bet that if that's the case, and, you know, there's guys hunting where every one of these X's are, which would be insane. It's not going to be that many guys hunting it. But, uh, you know, basically they got the whole land covered and just pressured and it's, it's, it's worthless. 
Um, but they're, they're signed there, and, you know, there's there's big buck rubs, and that's why there's so many guys hunting it, because there's big buck rubs, um, or there's a lot of deer trails, and you can tell there's deer there. Excuse me, I bumped my mic. Um, you can tell there's a lot of deer trails there and things, um, so there's definitely a lot of deer. Um, now, this, this strategy here, you know, like I said, I'm going to say it one more time, because I want you to understand it. Um, you know, check your, your local laws on this, because... You know, I don't want you to get in trouble. But these houses and stuff in here have a lot of woods and cover around them. Okay, and there's a pretty good area here um, of these houses. I'm going to get close to them houses. And, you know, this is where a lot of guys will overlook this. Because if that's the case, these deer are probably, especially your bigger deer, are going to be bedded close to these houses. Okay, now you have to get in there and scout, figure out where the heck they're bedded. Um, but another thing, it looks kind of thick in there to me, around here, and I'll show you that. Let me erase this. But, as I zoom in, um, I'm not... I see trees and stuff laying down. I can see the ground right here. Now this is some steep terrain it looks like. I haven't checked actually checked this area on Topo. I usually do. Um, but I can tell that steep terrain I didn't really necessarily need to on this, this property. Um, but I see what I believe is some trees down here and there. Maybe they're died, whatever the case may be. But I see the ground. I know there's a creek running through here, but um, when I see the ground like that, I see thick terrain. Or thick terrain. Thick cover. Um, you know, and now obviously we're up in these people's backyards. But, okay. So, you got the, the idea. If all this is hunted... Boom, we're going to get close to these houses. And why is that? I'm going to tell you why that is, okay? Um, that's just a program I'm using to draw with. Um, this uh, area is holding deer. There's deer, there's food. You know, we prove that, you know, by saying, hey, there's rub lines, hey, there's deer trails. There's droppings, there's there's oak trees, there's white oaks, whatever the case may be. We know there's deer on the property. Okay. The problem is where in the heck do them deer go when all these guys come in? Well, I just told you they go to that how to them towards them houses. These deer are feeding out in here. Okay, wherever you know they're feeding at doesn't really matter. The point is is that's what they're doing. Um, they're feeding here an hour before daylight, two hours before daylight. Um, if this is heavily hunted, everybody and their brother and sister comes through here. You know, to all them stands we drove out earlier. Um, you know, however they come in, doesn't really matter. They're not, you know, they're not going to fool all the deer in the dang woods, especially the older deer. And they sure ain't going to fool, fool them. They might fool them once or twice, but they're not going to fool them for very long. They're going to figure out what's going on and what are them deer going to do. They're going to head for their bed immediately. Okay. Where are they bedded? They're going to be bedded pretty close to these houses. Why? Because it's safe. Another key thing to understand when you're close to them houses, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in scent control. I mean, I think it's one of the... Uh, most important things you can do but when you're close to them houses they're used to smelling people they're not gonna be alert is as bad when they wind a person things like that because they smell people there all the time it's normal for them to smell a human okay they're not gonna just blow out of there now obviously they see you and things like that they're gonna get gone but they're still wild deer um, they're not stupid but they realize that humans are in the area and human, you know, that they're safe. Um, so that's the strategy that I would use if this is heavily hunted. Now, there's another section within your what you drew that's no different 
right over here. I'm going to spin this map around so we can see this. This is no different. You have houses in here, and this is the same thing to me. And I'm not 100% sure that these trees are laying on the ground. Boy, they just look like, I mean, that looks, looks, looks like an uprooted tree to me. But I don't know, because if you look at it like that, it almost looks like it's laying on this building. But I don't know. And a lot of times I'll, I'll pull up uh, Bing Maps and look at this and see what, you know, a little bit more bird's eye view, a little bit more detailed. Um, but I can definitely see the ground right in here. I can see spots, spot, spots of the ground, you know, right? Well, maybe not right there. So this looks like it's going to could seriously have in, in air in spots like here, here, here. Um, looks like we could definitely have some good thick undergrowth kind of a deal. And uh, be a good bedding area. So this is the other thing, you know. And even if this isn't heavily hunted, don't overlook around these houses. You know, you get out in here and you're, you can't see deer. Or you're just not seeing deer or you're getting pictures of deer only at night. Don't overlook that deer are bedded around these houses in these thick areas and stuff. Okay. Another area, and I don't know exactly sure the property line, um, but another areas that are that are pretty interesting, especially if you're bow hunting, is along this this river or lake. Uh, no, this is a river, but it's a river uh, right here along this river. Um, areas like this right down through here you know not many people is probably going to hunt this and it actually looks like it's difficult to get to I want to spin this map a little bit more this direction it looks like it's difficult to get to and actually if you get deer down on here they're really good and funneled and you know one problem you're going to have though is with this this big hill here it's going to swirl your scent but you can let your your scent blow out into this river and you don't have anything to worry about with uh deer smelling you well that's a wide dang river um, or is it maybe a lake i think it's a river though um So, anyways, it's a river. I can see the current in it, but um, I'm trying to think. I think that's basically covering everything. You know, here on this this property here, it's not a huge property. It looks like a type of property that a lot of guys overlook, and I think that's what may be going on. Because it's not a big area. Um, a lot of times, them are the ones. That it's just, really it's pretty small. Um, and a lot of times, them are the ones that guys overlook. So I would definitely check it out. Um, look at them, them different areas. Look at the things I showed you. Um, you know, check around them houses and stuff too. Like I said, but I'm gonna say it one more time. And I know I've said it this third time, but check your laws before you get too close to the house and stuff and see what the laws are on hunting close to the house I might hate for you to get in, get in trouble um, for hunting too close to someone's house so check them um, you know it's in our state it's different with a gun and a, and a bow you can be closer obviously with a bow and you know bows not going to travel as far and that makes a lot of sense so in some it used to not be like that though it used to be the same distance um, but I think they changed it last year or something um, so, you know, I don't know if you bow hunt or a gun hunt or whatever, but, you know, it may be different 
so you need to check into that real good and see. Um, I don't see, other than uh, funnels and stuff, I don't see any funnels other than, you know, if a deer gets on here, they can definitely be funneled. And if this hill is this steep, um, they can definitely be funneled on the bottom of this hill. Okay. Just go ahead and draw it out a little bit. Um, you know, deer in this area here that are going this way are going to be in a tight area down through here. Okay, same thing here. They're going to be a tight area. Um, so there are, you know, areas I want to check out. You know, if there's good deer trails, if there's rub lines, what have you. Um, there could, it could be some good pinches here um, because of this big hill and this river. So, you know, there's there's likely a good stand location down through here. Very likely. Um, because of the pinch that's that's going on. I'm trying to figure out what... Oh, yeah, erase. Um, and then the only other funnel that I that I really seen, and it's not really a, a funnel, but I've seen that this is difficult here, and I, I done talked about that. And one other thing, um, too, you know, I said this area here, but it's also going to be over here, and I did mention that, but I looked at it, you know, and said it looks like over here. It could be, you know, in here where you could hunt. You want to look at that and see, you know, is this difficult to cross here? Um, another thing, if this is a bridge, I forgot to mention this. Um, if this is a bridge and there's a creek coming under that, um, if them deer can walk under that bridge, boom, heck of a spot to hunt. I forgot to mention that because I didn't, I don't know. But if this is a bridge and there's a tunnel through there, um, them deer will walk under that bridge and that will be a absolute excellent funnel from them getting from here to here you know they'll cross through there so that you want to take a look at that to see if that's going on I can't see that on aerial photo to see if that is a possibility but I can tell you that if this is a bridge they'll walk under bridges I've seen that myself and I'm talking beat down trails um, and most people would overlook it, and you can see it right on an aerial photo. So um, I hope this video here helps you out, Corey. I appreciate you uh, letting me take a look at it. And uh, if you have any questions or whatever, feel free to shoot me an email, and uh, I'll help you out best I can, and, and I wish you luck. I hope you get a big one if you do. Uh, and if, you, if you don't get a big one, you know, you killed doe or whatever, send me a picture. I'd like to see it and, and like to see that you – that you had some success on, on this place. Um, I, the place has some potential. Um, I can I can tell you that um, because, like I said in the very beginning, you know, it's either not hunted because there's not many deer there. And, you know, any no matter what the reason is, if it's not being hunted, it's got potential, especially for bigger deer. Because they, they you know, that's where they grow old at. They have to grow old. And it's easier for them to grow old when they're not hunted. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helps you out. Check out DeerHuntingSchool.com for more tips, information, things like that on deer hunting. Have a good day and bye-bye.